Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm really excited and honored for today's guest, Rashawn. He is a minister who writes and a writer who preaches. He is also a speaker and an author. And he's co-founded I'm So Blessed Daily, a digital outreach reaching millions of people. He's also the owner of a digital marketing company in Oklahoma City called Frontier Creative. Rashawn currently has over 6 million followers throughout his platforms. And he's currently partnering with 25 nonprofit organizations, churches, and businesses around the world. He is also on staff with Lead.org, an organization that pours into thousands of leaders worldwide. Collectively, the Lead.org reaches over 45,000 churches worldwide. Rashawn is also the host of a nationally syndicated radio podcast, Scriptures and Stories with Rashawn Copeland. He has been featured on True TV, Oprah Winfrey's Oxygen TV, and America's Funniest Videos, which we're going to see what that's all about, <laughs> through his nonprofit, Without Walls, he's empowered over 100,000 young adults and college students to have a purpose-driven mindset in life, to achieve their goals by creatively educating, equipping, and encouraging them to become leaders with their gifts. Rashawn lives in Oklahoma City and is a native and loves his beautiful wife, and his three children. Rashawn, welcome to Making Bank. What's up, Josh? I'm so humbled to be with you, brother. <laughs> I love your show, and I'm stoked to be a part. Well, you know, it's super excited. I appreciate you reaching out, and I was like diving in, looking at, you know, everything that you were doing, and just really amazing, you know, your journey and where you kind of came from to where you are today. So yeah. super excited to dive into that with you. And maybe give us a little bit of your background, kind of what got you started and everything. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. I grew up in a military family and I'm military myself. So I was no stranger to traveling around the world, traveling around the states. And that really showed me, you know, just the possibilities, the possibilities. I've met people from South Queens to the Philippines, and it just blew my mind to realize like how many different cultures and backgrounds, you know, that I could learn from and grow, you know, and I, I just felt like I have to be a part of, you know, something bigger than myself. And what's been, what was really good about that throughout my college years, I was wrestling with this idea of what would it look like to make bank, to, to get money, to, to be famous and, you know, find a purpose that, that is amazing, uh, that can impact the world. So I started thinking about, as I was finishing college, I was a co uh, college athlete, you know, playing football at the University of Kansas under, you know, Mark Mangino. And it was a prominent program in basketball, but our football years were really good. Like we were, we were having the best records. And I was thinking maybe, hey, there's a chance, uh, there's a chance for NFL. You know, there's a chance for me, to, to probably showcase showcase my talents in the NFL. A lot of my friends were going. So I put my hopes and dreams into going into the NFL. And when I found out, unbeknown to me, that, hey, I wasn't good enough. I wouldn't cut it. I had to start thinking of plan B. What was I going to do? And I decided, bro, this is out of all the things in the world. Uh, I decided to follow my dad's footsteps and go into the G.I. Joe Army. <laughs> And when I got into the army, bro, after finishing college, I realized I don't want to be slaving my whole life working underneath an army, even though it's a noble, it's a beautiful thing to sacrifice. You're like, there's so many brothers in arms that I love to death, but it just wasn't me. I felt like I was trying to win approval from my dad and from everyone else around me. And, you know, to be a lieutenant, an officer in the army. And this is what I thought was for me, having power. Uh, you know, over people, being a leader. And I didn't think that was so much of the leader I wanted to be. See, my definition of leadership is having the capacity to influence others through inspiration. It's generated by a passion. It's motivated by a vision, but it's birthed from a conviction. 
But deep down, it's produced by a purpose from God. That's my new definition of leadership. Instead of, of leading by manipulation, what a lot of the uh, the military system is set up from, sadly, from my experiences. Yeah, I mean, no, that's true. That's just what I've experienced. Instead of manipulation, it's by inspiration, seeing how we can serve and sacrifice for people in, in, in the most authentic way versus, you know, using our rank to, to bash people. Like, and I don't want to like, get into a lot of that, but I just know it was tough for me uh, as I've seen so many people. Uh, and I love our, yeah, I love our military. Don't want politics. But what I end up doing, buddy, I end up going out to, to, uh, Los Angeles seeking, you know, fame and in a name. And, uh, I ended up coming across some amazing viners and YouTubers and we ended up getting a lot of, um, so basically a lot of attention on vine. My account went from like 200, two, 200,000 to like 2 million in like just, a I think it was six months or something. It was really crazy. And I began to work with these guys. And I noticed you can make crazy bank online. And um, as I started getting money, I started getting opportunities with Fortune 500 companies, like uh, just a few, just to say a few. It was Nokia before they went to Microsoft and used to work with them as an influencer. I worked with some of the other companies out there, like production companies, agencies, and it was really cool. But at the end of the day, you know, one of the biggest things that I sort of pride myself on is being a hype man for Soldier Boy. <laughs> and that was one of the craziest things that happened while I was out there. However, in the midst of having all this money and getting all this attention, you know, in quote unquote, you know, gaining this fame across social media, it was a new thing for me. But it, it also was something that opened up my eyes to see that the money wasn't fulfilling me. It wasn't satisfying me just the money in and of itself alone. So I bring you, I say all that to say this, bro, at the end of, end of the day, I found myself clutching thousands of dollars as I'm sitting back in the valley, sitting down, like, why am I still empty? Why is there no happiness in my heart? Why? Like, and then I began to cry out. I like when my friends start leaving me, you know, the people I was close to out of nowhere, all this stuff started happening, bro. And like, I, I found out that there's a mate for more than this. Why am I here? And this is, this is what I want to share with you. This is what changed everything. I, I, I realized once a man, he, he called me real quick, a man called me and he said, who are you? He asked me, who am I? And then I start going off all these things that I did or that I'm doing. And no, he said, no, I said, who are you? So, so he, you know, he jumped on the phone, you know, he's, he's like, Hey man, you know, where, you know, where, who are you? What, what do you have going on? And, you know, obviously you were dropping all the material things and things like that, that you're like, Oh, I'm the greatest because of all this stuff. He, and he wants you, he's like, no, no, you know, I want you to really tell me, you know, who you are and stuff. And obviously for you, that was a big pivotal moment. That was something that you're like looking deep inside, like, whoa, what, you know, who am I? And I guess, how did you kind of come through that? And how did you come out the other, I guess, the other end of that? So I was, so the way I came through the end of that, I, I came to the, to the realization that I am not what I do. And one of the greatest things that man had the privilege of doing is introducing me to God so I could be introduced to myself. And from that, my whole view began to change on life, that I'm not here to be employed, but I'm here to be deployed for a purpose. There's four things that I felt like my life should be, you know, encompassed around. And it's this, it's knowing God, loving God, discovering my purpose and making a difference. And that's what like helped me so much. It sort of moved me into these new uh, networks and, and, and uh, yeah, and a new purpose and a new calling has changed my life. I have to, here's some pr principles that helped me, man, like uh, that I would love to share is that one, when I felt my purpose of why I'm here, because one of the saddest thing, things to go through or do is to go to a funeral, go to a funeral, or go to your own funeral and realize, like, I lived my whole life not knowing why. 
like why I'm here. And another thing is, is after figuring out my purpose and figuring out my life vision and my life's vision was basically to, to, to see my purpose in picture, like see my purpose actually at the end, like being, you know, and, and that, that was amazing just to know that a lot of the things I prayed for a long time ago are now coming into fruition, like, you know, traveling, uh, across the country, impacting, impacting thousands of people, you know, even via through social media, one of our largest platforms is reaching millions of people every single day. And I've been able to team up with amazing world changers in the Philippines, hired about 13, uh, different people in the Philippines, uh, where we actually have a running agency out there and they're doing amazing things, uh, and it's just amazing to see the the overall impact that's happening, bro. Knowing that it's a made for a purpose bigger than myself now, and it's not about me anymore. It's a life driven by love and sacrifice, uh, a different type of sacrifice than I ever seen. Yeah. So you know, for those people that may be like, "Man, I really wish I could figure out what my purpose is and all that thing," kind of what was that thought process that you went through? To and questions may you may have asked yourself to actually really get to what that purpose is that you're being deployed for. Awesome, bro. Great question. One of the things that I um, would oftentimes ask myself, like, if I'm not, like, if everything I've ever done isn't working, it's not fully satisfying. It satisfies me for a moment, you know. But what is my true purpose? And uh, what came to realization for me is that I must know the God who created me, you know. I must get into his word. I must, you know, renew my mind all throughout my life. I've been told what I can't do, you know, all throughout my life. I've been told bashed on like, Hey dude, um, this, you're this, you're that. I even think highly of myself, like, you know, too highly of myself sometimes, but to actually come to a realization of the truth, like who I truly am, which is a guy who's been broken. Who's been far from, from God, a true provider, a true protector, a true sustainer, like it, it's changed everything for me, man, to, to know, ask those questions like, what is the true purpose for my life? And it's to glorify God that I believe and to, you know, uh, pour into people, serve people, love people, love God, love people. That's, that's what I see it being, bro. Jesus was the greatest leader of all time. Right. You know, like he was phenomenal. We still talk to him about, about him. <laughs> You know, thousands of years later, they tried to crush him. They tried to bring him down. But he's still here. His name oh, yeah. is still being spoke of. We still use his principles and all <laughs> all kinds of things. You know, like, it's just phenomenal. To, and to know that that isn't only my teacher, but he's like, my Lord, I love him. I follow him. So it's changed my life, bro. I don't know. It's insane, though. <laughs> cool. So what, um, so kind of discovering that and kind of getting you focused in, how has um, these different projects, you know, transpired for you? So obviously you have a digital marketing agency. Um, you mentioned what, like, what do you guys focus on there? And then, you know, I, and then there's all these, there are there different um, opportunities that have been created kind of now that you found your purpose. And so kind of where are you focused in putting your time and really driving uh, home for you? Awesome, man. Love it. So right now I'm currently, I ended up uh, getting an opportunity uh, for a, a really big book deal, a two book deal. I'm not the most educated brother in the world. I'm not the smartest man in the world at all, not even close. But I know one thing is that I truly want to uh, empower people. I truly want to uh, be disciplined enough to know like, hey, what I can do, what I can't do, keeping my, uh, my vision narrow, going down a straight path where it's, uh, less about me and more about people, more about loving them and meeting them where they are. So that's what my life's driven by now. It's like every morning I wake up, like, how can I serve someone? It may not even, even with the right motives. Like there's people uh, I've been with, you know, so the, the CEOs of Hobby Lobby, I've been with, uh, you know, just all across the world, like being with people who are phenomenal uh, leaders. And I've noticed one thing they've given me is their heart for generosity, not their heart for greed, their heart to like really become, um, 
become less about the material thing and more about the needs of people. And it's like, yeah, it's been really cool. So I'm focused right now, I would say in my life on uh, leading, leading and mentoring others. So, you know, later my success, Joseph, it it doesn't die with me. It doesn't die with me, but it's going to go on, um, you know, because of the fruits of my labor now, you know, what actually interesting thing that you brought up, um, you know, kind of waking up each day kind of with a, you know, servant mindset and everything. And it was actually interesting too. earlier this week at church, they were talking about, you know, being able to love like Christ and what does that take and everything else. And it is having a mindset of a servant of humility and, you know, going through that. So it was just kind of interesting that you brought that up and kind of what each day that you're waking up and driving forward with uh, to go out and help other people. True. That's really good, bro. And I love how you said that. Like, I think about it like this. Uh, it's it's really hard in our day and age. Uh, I know in America, the average American shops six hours a day. I just heard that earlier wow. today, <laughs> but they only spend 45 minutes with their their children, you know, Mm. just playing with children. Imagine if we were a generation or a people who would literally uh, submit ourselves to to, to God, but also to our families, you know, the order of the Bible. Imagine how that will set up the next generation. Like imagine how many people will be changed um, because of our, you know, faithfulness, but obedience and dependence upon you know, our creator, like, I don't know, man, I, it just changes things. Like when you just spend that time sick, imagine spending six hours with your, your child. Oh yeah. And, and one day I'm not saying you can just be off. And, and I heard even through one of your podcasts that you're a stay at home dad. I I'm a freakage, like, you know, fan of you because of that. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. We get I to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I can only imagine how it can impact so much generations and this is what god's taught me too bro i just want to point it back to him a bit because think about this like he doesn't just have in mind us he has in mind our children's children that's why the scripture says right. like a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children and i i think it's important for us to grasp that that it's not about us and even if we're making bank we're making good money oh uh, it's more important that we don't suffer loss later, but we, uh, so, you know, we were working towards a reward and our reward. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. Yeah. So when you're, you know, you're connected with somebody and you know, you're helping people move forward and stuff and their journey and stuff, what are maybe your top three kind of mindsets or, um, kind of strategies that you take them through? Okay. I would say my top three strategies that I'll take someone through, especially like if I'm mentoring them, pouring into them. Just anyone who even follows my platforms knows this. I would say commit to your principles and values. You know, make personal promises to yourself and do's and don'ts like, hey, I won't go this route, but I'm going to go this route every single day. Like we have to become people of like covenant, like who make promises to ourselves, knowing we're going to stay true. We're going to stay true to, to, to what we, you know, conviction over cool in our generation, people want to do, you know, what's right before they do what's real. People will always try to get you to drift their way, quote unquote, what's right in people's eyes. But, you know, dead fish go with the flow. You know, you want to go and trailblaze, you know, stay true to your vision. I, that's what I would say for that. That's one of them. Uh, the, the other thing I would say is coordinate your resources uh, coordinating your resources, meaning don't waste time. You know, time is valuable. Uh, it's a great asset we all have. And not only that, it's an amazing resource, but everything else we have, you can be broke right now, a man in a warehouse or a man in the White House. Regardless of where you are right now, you have to understand that everything's a resource, even if it doesn't look good, even if it doesn't look perfect. It's a resource and it's a resource that can work out for your benefit at the end. We're all in a story that needs to be told, you know? All right. So, Rashawn, you were talking a little bit about your strategies and the mindset, kind of what you take people through to kind of help them on their journey and, you know, to encourage them and empower them everything. And one of the things you mentioned was... Uh, had to do with the fact of, um, you know, people tend to get comfortable. And so when people tend to get comfortable, they don't 
want to challenge themselves or a lot of our population, they're comfortable in whatever it is following and not really challenging and pushing themselves to move beyond, to get out of their comfort zones and to kind of move themselves to that next level. So what has worked really well for you to tell, because I know it sounds like from what you were saying, you continuously do that on a daily and weekly basis. I mean, so how do you move yourself out of that comfort zone, um, you know, to always continue to push through those different challenges to move you to that next level? Love it, bro. Thank, thanks for that question. Solid question. And this is something I think about all the time. Um, commitment isn't comfort food. When you're comfortable, when you're too, you know, and that's why one of the biggest things is I stay around people who are very, very passionate about what they do, uh, that are in the same lane as me, that can constantly challenge me. Um, and I think one of the greatest things for you, just if you're listening to the podcast right now, I'd encourage you to start speaking your passion, start speaking it out loud. And I, I believe in just the power of just, just hearing and declaring over, you know, your life, you know, those things that you're passionate about, because some way, somehow, even when the voices get loud around you, you have a way of going back to what, you know, what that inner passion is and following it. You know, there's so many people that I know who don't talk about their passion. So they find themselves not even getting the opportunity to, to break through or to do amazing things because no one knows what they want to do. You know, no one knows that they are passionate about this or that because they keep their mouth shut. Therefore, there's no great opportunities or resources or people aren't investing, you know? So that that's one of the big things, bro. Like if you ever hang out with me in person, which that would be extremely awesome just to chill with you for a bit, Josh. But one of the one of the things that I've noticed, like anytime I'm anywhere, I'm slow to speak, of course. I mean, not really, because I speak really fast, but I try to listen and engage. But one of the greatest things that ever happened to me was being passionate, but not only that, speaking my passion, because at that point, you get people who will invest in your vision when you're open about it. And it's, yeah, it's just amazing, bro. Yeah. And you can tell, I mean, your passion, I mean, it just oozes out of you right now over through the, Man. through the video <laughs> screen. <laughs> um, hey, we, so we only got a couple minutes left. What, um, you know, as we're talking everything here, what, and you're thinking in the back of your mind, man, what's one question I know Josh really, really needs to ask me. Um, so okay. kind of maybe, or something that you just know deep down that's burning in you. You're like, I got to really say this. I want to get this out there and get it out to the world. Okay. Good deal. I would just say, Josh, if, if anything I could share, like, what's that one thing that's going to last forever? That's what I would like to share about. Like, really just reminding people, no matter how much they have or where they are in life, how great, you know, they sense they are, maybe even me, like, I'm just thinking of the reality of it. We're all broken, man. And I would encourage them to let that brokenness sort of, sort of be your platform, speak about it. And, but also, you know, point, you know, try i would just say try jesus man because he changes everything man that's that's what i would say try jesus uh he wants to fulfill you he wants to satisfy you he wants to you know lead your life uh and i know that's hard and it's a humbling thing to do but i'm telling you man what does it profit you know a man to gain everything but but lose his, like to not spend eternity with God, you know? Right. I don't know. I don't want to bring, <laughs> you know, awesome, but, dude. but I just want to <laughs> say, if you're feeling desperate, lacking hope, yeah, yeah, turn to God, man. He loves you, man. So I don't know. Cool, I know dude. This ain't a Christian podcast. <laughs> it's all good. We, we, put, any- we put it all out there and, you know, people that want to stay to listen, they can listen. And the people that don't, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the way sure. I look at it. <laughs> Your love, man. Cool. Well, hey, uh, where can people get find out more about you? You know, where can they go hear more on your podcast and everything? Okay, awesome, bro. So, Scriptures and Stories podcast. We just started it uh, January 2019. It was super cool. You know, just sharing God's word, making a space for people just to be encouraged. So, yeah, that's where we are. Uh, another thing is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You just look up Rashawn Copeland. You'll find me and yeah, yeah, super 
I'll be thankful to connect with you or pray with you and just encourage you. Yeah. So. Awesome, buddy. Well, hey, uh, Rashawn, I really appreciate your time today sharing your insights, kind of yeah. your journey of what's transformed you and everything. So thank you for your time today. Um, guys, I hope you guys are really paying attention to what Rashawn was saying. And listen, there's a lot of little insights and nuggets he's dropped throughout this. And you just have to listen and turn off any filters that you may have and really focus on the overall value and information that he's trying to deliver to you. So again, yeah. take some notes, rewind, listen, watch again. And Rashawn, thank you for coming on Making Bank today. Thank you, bro, Josh. Peace. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.